They're the most trafficked creatures on the planet, and they were overjoyed to be free of their stifling confinement. Over 100 fearful animals were about to be sneaked into a bus in Vietnam where they'd be sent to the worst imaginable destination in East Asia. But the operation was foiled just in time. Saving the lives of 32 critically endangered pangolin and 69 turtles captured from the traffickers has sent rescuers from Save Vietnam's Wildlife, SVW, a wildlife rescue organization in northern Vietnam, to the scene. After tearing open the sacks that contained the pangolins, they were able to observe the naturally shy animals, which curl up into a ball when they're scared, begin to relax. The attempts to smuggle the pangolins and turtles into Thailand aboard a tourist bus is still under investigation by police. However, the idea is all too prevalent, especially for pangolins who are regarded to be the most heavily trafficked mammal on the globe. The desire for their scales, which are wrongly believed to have therapeutic benefits, and their meat, which is considered a delicacy in the Far East, is the driving force behind this trend. When found in the wild, a baby pangolin is particularly close to his mother and will frequently ride on her back and tail. However, the illegal wildlife trade has caused many pangolin families to be split apart. This is why rescue efforts and animal rehabilitation become so vital in the effort to save the species, which has lost at least one million individuals to the pet trade in the previous decade, according to current estimates. Animal rescuers from the SVW place the captured pangolins in transport boxes to carry them back to the rescue center, where they'll join dozens of other pangolins who are working to become stronger so that they can someday be released back into their natural habitat. According to SVW, we were fortunate to arrive on time and transport all of the pangolins back to our center within a couple of hours. They were all able to make it. The latest pangolins appear to be in good shape, at least as compared to the weary state of some that have been confiscated from traffickers. It's unlikely that it'll be long before all 32 of them are back in the wild. Pangolins lost their lives to illegal trafficking between 2004 and 2014, according to the Pangolin Specialist Group, and unfortunately the practice does not appear to be slowing down anytime soon. These particular animals were fortunate in that they were given a second chance and were transported to a refuge operated by Save Vietnam's Wildlife, where they were treated, watched, and eventually released back into the wild. Despite the fact that many people appear in danger, right now, Experts from the association are skeptical that there will be any long-term consequences. The biggest threat to the majority of pangolin species is unlawful hunting and poaching for local consumption and illicit international trade, which is a result of a combination of factors. The equivalent of more than 895,000 pangolins were trafficked internationally between 2000 and 2019, according to recent estimates based on seizure data. In this trade, pangolin scales and flesh are the most commonly traded commodities, with the majority of the goods being shipped to East Asia and Southeast Asia. Other body parts are traded to a lesser extent. Chinese and Vietnamese traditional Asian medicines include the use of pangolin scales as a component, particularly in the treatment of gout. They are said to be a remedy for a variety of maladies, ranging from heart disease to cancer, as well as a means of assisting nursing women in producing milk. Pangolin scales, like rhino horn and human fingernails, are composed of keratin, and there's no scientific evidence to suggest that they're useful in medicine in the Western world. In a similar vein, pangolin scales are used to treat a wide range of medical issues in traditional African medicine, which is particularly prevalent in West and Central Africa, and it's known as muti, or juju. Throughout human history, pangolins have been consumed as a source of protein in practically every range country on the planet. Because of the high prices pangolins may command in the international black market, this practice continues in Asia, but in many areas local consumption has been forsaken in favor of exporting the creatures into the illegal international black market. China, Vietnam, and other countries in Southeast Asia are the primary destinations for most of this trafficking, where pangolins are considered a delicacy in many cultures. Because of the high price and apparent scarcity, Buyers view pangolins as a luxury product that they can use to demonstrate their riches and social position, such as businesses who want to impress clients when signing contracts. Pangolins are consumed as wild meat in Africa, particularly in West and Central Africa, where local trade rather than international trade is the norm, according to the World Wildlife Fund. It's estimated that at least 400,000 pangolins are hunted and consumed in Central Africa each year, based on current estimates. 
Despite the fact that the pangolin is a protected species under international law, there is an illicit worldwide traffic in pangolins and their parts. When it comes to CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, which attempts to prevent wild species from becoming extinct as a result of international trade, pangolins have a long history of being protected. CITES Appendix 2 status for each pangolin species was granted in 1995, indicating that trade in these animals would be closely regulated. In the year 2000, zero export quotas for wild-caught specimens traded for primarily commercial purposes was established for Asian pangolins, effectively establishing a proxy trade prohibition. Because of ongoing concerns about over-exploitation of pangolin populations, each species was listed in CITES Appendix 1 at the 17th Conference of the Parties COP17, in 2016 resulting in an international trade ban on the commercial trade in wild-caught pangolins and their derivatives from all sources. Pangolins are also protected species in most of the nations where they live, according to national legislation, although illicit harvesting and trading continues uninterrupted, at least for the time being. In another similar story, farmer who sold sick and dying dogs and was found with a dead puppy in a plastic bag suffered in a car footwell, spared from jail. A puppy breeder who produced sick and dying puppies in filthy conditions and sold them for 400 pounds apiece was saved from prison. While offering the animals online, Louise Poulton, 43, kept them in pitch black sheds covered in blood and feces. The dogs were kept in appalling conditions at Pastures Farm in Beckenhill, Solihull, West Midlands, according to shocking video from the RSPCA raid. In the footwell of a Peugeot van outside, a dead dog was discovered packed inside a plastic shopping bag close to abandoned fizzy drink cans and McDonald's wrappers. Sean Kerr, Poulton's boyfriend, was sentenced to six months in prison in February this year after being convicted of six counts of causing unnecessary suffering to dogs and three counts of failing to meet the needs of a number of canines. Poulton, guilty to these same nine offenses today at Birmingham Magistrates Court, but not sentenced to prison. She was sentenced to 22 weeks in prison, suspended for a year, and barred from owning pets for the rest of her life. Polton, who now resides in St. Albans, Hertfordshire, was also fined £15,000 in costs. On December 22, 2015, RSPCA police raided Pastures Farm after grieving owners reported buying sick and dying dogs from the pair, according to the court. Inspectors were shocked to find 37 dogs in deplorable conditions, including pugs, Bichon Friezes, cockapoos, Shih Tzus, and Chihuahuas. Four dogs were discovered imprisoned in a dark outbuilding, three of which were pregnant, while a pregnant Shih Tzu was discovered in a tight downstairs toilet. Officers also discovered the body of a deceased puppy in the footwell of a van parked at the farm, wrapped in a plastic carrier bag. They discovered a whiteboard in one of the stables with instructions for daily dog care, including, keep puppies quiet, do not let them bark squirt them or crack them in the yard with a whip. The couple allegedly sold the pups on Pets for Homes website to persons who then had to pay hundreds of pounds in vet bills or were forced to put the dogs down. Inspector Hershey Bull of the RSPCA stated after the hearing that it marked an end to a 16-month large-scale operation to combat puppy farming. We were contacted by persons who had purchased schnauzers, Westies, and pugs from a farm in Coventry Road, Beckenhill, Miss Bull continued, many of them became unwell in a matter of hours, and regrettably, some of them died in a matter of days. Not only did the new owners have to pay costly vet fees, but they also had to deal with the stress and anguish of seeing their new puppies die right before their eyes. The dogs were kept in deplorable conditions and were scared to death. Some were confined in places inside the property, including a terrified pregnant Shih Tzu who was held in a freezing downstairs laboratory and four dogs, three of them were pregnant, were kept in an outbuilding in complete darkness with no light or ventilation. In fact, we didn't even realize they were there until a few hours into our search of the property, Miss Bull explained. The dogs were all terrified. They froze in fear the moment you touch them. The vendors don't care about the dog's health or well-being because they're just commodities to be bought and sold. The breeder stock is kept in deplorable conditions, and is exploited to produce litter after litter with little or no consideration for their well-being. And puppies are born with malformations or health problems as a result of bad breeding, 
and they don't receive the proper care during their formative periods, resulting in major health difficulties or behavioral issues. On February 16th, Poulton's partner, Sean Kerr, now of Stoke-on-Trent, Staffordshire, was sentenced to six months in prison and barred from owning dogs for the rest of his life. District Judge Shamim Qureshi of Birmingham Magistrates Court also sentenced him to pay £30,000 in costs. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.